Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well today I just wanted to invite you to spend some time here in the garden and also in my kitchen with me today, cooking with some things that are from the garden. I just have so many beautiful things I wanna show you and I also picked up a flat of Proven Winners plants at our local nursery because they were having fill a flat for $25 of Proven Winners plants, which around here would normally be at least $50. So I picked up a bunch of Angelonia, a little bit of alyssum, and a Thumbergia to replace one of my sweet peas that isn't doing so good. But let me show you some gorgeous things that are blooming now. We'll get to planting. I also want to Chelsea chop a few things and then use those cuttings for propagation purposes. And then I'm hoping we'll be able to make some tart cherry muffins together because our cherry trees are coming on strong now. Sorry, I think that was a very long winded opening, but the first flower I need to show you is brand new to me. It's called commonly Peruvian daffodil, but I put the botanical up there on the screen. And this flower is so cool and it smells amazing wait till you see it so here it is and it almost smells like a honeysuckle funny enough it's planted right next to my honeysuckle right there let me get next to it so you can see how big it is hopefully that helps a little bit and I can put my hand up next to it also so it is about the size of my hand I thought this was going to be really small when I saw the picture on the Longfield Gardens website but and you know it almost looked a little bit strange too but now that I see it in person, I think it is funky, but it's also fabulous. This is one that I'll definitely grow again. And I have these on both sides of the border here going into Hummingbird Way. The next flower I need to show you is this beautiful sunflower from Sunflower Steve. This is his Van Gogh Fantasy Mix. And look how absolutely gorgeous this one is. There's another beautiful one back there. And then look at this fluffy one. This one almost reminds me of a teddy bear sunflower meets maybe a double quick sunflower. Are you getting that vibe from this one? But the bees are really adoring this one and this bed is just starting to bloom now. I also want to give you a quick update on the $5 garden. It's starting to come into full bloom. I think about one more week. So probably when I do the June garden tour, this will be in full bloom. But I just really love this garden because I feel like it's just really truly who I am as a gardener. Just kind of keeping it simple and growing from seed. So let me give you a quick look at that. I mean, isn't that just lovely? And I'm not sure if you can see the robin in the background there on my neighbor's property. But I only have two kinds of zinnias over here. I have Baneri purple, and then I have the Baneri pink. And I wasn't too sure how this was going to work out because this is where Grace likes to visit one of our neighbors. And she has kind of knocked a few zinnias over, but that's totally okay. It's still gonna look beautiful and the birds and the butterflies are really gonna love this area. Here's an update on the tip top rose nasturtium seeds that I got from Baker Creek. I think these were included free with my order and I really love them. They're a really bright kind of coral pink and I'm hoping they'll kind of spill all over this bed here. The white rocket snapdragons are looking good. I'm hoping to harvest these this evening. I didn't set up the stand today because we're raining on and off all day, which is why I thought it would be a good day to bake some muffins, but they really are beautiful. And the actual snapdragon blooms, each bloom is really, really large. But what I really want to update you on is my all-time favorite lily called Mapira. Mapira is an Asiatic lily, so there's no fragrance at all. It is this amazing deep burgundy color. I absolutely adore dark flowers. Anything black, brown, dark burgundy, eggplant color, I'm all about it. So let me get you a close-up of Mapira. I mean, isn't that just absolutely breathtaking? Each bulb has multiple flowers per bulb, and these were much shorter last year and probably gave me maybe four flowers per bulb last year, this year, one, two. I mean, it looks like there's about eight blooms per bulb and they just look absolutely phenomenal. So what I have planted around them this year is most of my Dara, which is just starting to come into bloom now. 
I also have to thank someone here because I had a comment that said I should think about framing my grandma's chair somehow, which was really wonderful advice. Thank you so much. I picked up these panels from Lowe's. They reminded me kind of of a stained glass window and my grandma was Catholic, so I thought she might like that. And then I just took the goji berry that I had already planted here a few years ago and I'm just gonna train it to kind of grow all throughout this kind of stained glass area. And then I also put in a slenderina blue spruce, which will grow up a little bit higher than the panels and then I'll train it to weep over her chair. So we'll have kind of that evergreen entrance and kind of a natural arch, as well as the artificial arch by these metal windows. So I just really appreciate all the great advice and suggestions that you give me. You guys are just filled with so many great ideas and I don't think I would have ever thought of that and it's really just what that area needed. And I was telling you guys I was really stuck kind of redesigning that area but once I framed her chair and kind of put some blue and maroon over there I think I'm really starting to see the vision now. So I'm afraid I could just zoom in on flowers all day so why don't we get to some gardening before I get carried away just looking and talking about flowers. Okay, I lied. I have to show you this seed dahlia that's blooming now. Look at all the colors in this bloom. Orange, pink, yellow. It looks like a beautiful sunset, doesn't it? Okay, I promise we'll get to some gardening now. So the first thing I wanted to do is here where my sedum is, I wanna go ahead and Chelsea chop that because I wanna plant the steel blue angelonia behind it. And I also want my sedum to be a little bit shorter this year and to have smaller heads. So that'll solve that problem. I did finally remember to Chelsea chop my Joe Pye weed there. I Chelsea chopped one of the plants, the one right behind the allium and the other plant I let go so that we kind of have two different flowering periods there. So we'll do that, we'll plant the angelonia. We might trim up the vitex just a little bit more. And then what I want to do next is plant this deeper purple angelonia. I'm having a hard time pulling out the pansies. I probably should just pull them out and plant the angelonia there. I don't know, we'll have to see when we get to it. I have a really hard time pulling out plants. And then let me take you back here to the raised beds. So you can see at this point, I pulled out the ranunculus because we did pop up to about 94 degrees for three consecutive days. I seeded in some queen lime red zinnias right there. But you can see that one of my sweet peas just is not doing it. It didn't take, um, it's just really struggling. No worries, I'm just gonna pull it out and I'm gonna replace it with this coconut appeal thumbergia. And then, just a few days ago, I went to this other nursery that closes in the middle of the season once it gets really hot, and they had free pepper plants and free herb plants. So I picked up some variegated oregano and some other things, but I thought I would just fill in my big pot here with a little bit of alyssum, why not? I think that'll look really beautiful, and you can see some beneficial insects already visiting this area. So I'll just go ahead and Chelsea chop this Autumn Joy sedum here. This was here when we moved here and I've just been propagating it and kind of placing it all around the garden after we moved in. Um, basically Chelsea chopping is just taking down the plant by about a third and usually at least in my area which is zone 6B southern Pennsylvania with an average first frost of mid to late October. You can usually do this until about July 4th. I've done it even a little bit after that without any big problem, but Autumn Joy flowers really late in the season, so we're really totally fine to do it now. So I'll just take it just like this, and then what I'll do is once I've cut back this whole area, I'll just remove a lot of these lower leaves and then I'll just stick this cutting directly in the ground wherever I want it to grow. And I'll have a whole bunch more sedum plants for free. So let me just go ahead and do that real quickly. It is a really nice overcast day today. The sun is coming out here and there. So this is also a good day to do it on a nice overcast day when it's not too hot and the plant will be able to recuperate really easily, but more importantly, the cuttings will have a really easy time rooting in on this nice overcast cool day. The weather has been so strange because a lot earlier on, 
we had this really bad heat wave that basically completely shut down my anemones and ranunculus. But since then, it has been really, really cool. So every year is different, right? Every year you learn and you have to adapt to whatever the weather decides to do. But I'll tell you what, I'm super thankful for it. I will take it. Well, that's great. So now let's just take the majority of these cuttings and I'm actually gonna stick them over in Grace's garden. I've started to work in some sedum there. Sedum has classically been known as a sun loving plant and that it really loves to be dry. Grace's garden is pretty much a full shade garden, but it stays a lot drier over there because of the large amount of trees. And from my experience, it does fine there in the shade. It doesn't flop over, it still flowers. So I'm not really sure that's kind of against what's kind of commonly thought sedum likes, but you know, hey, we have all these free cuttings. I figured why not just try it work last year and I'll show you the sedum that's over there. So I hope you can see over there where I have some sedum that I did this with last year. And here I just have another opening. I have some daffodil foliage that's dying back. So all I'm gonna do is kind of rough up the ground a little bit just so that it's ready for cuttings. Since it's sedum, I'm just gonna use just the earth that God gave me right here. I won't work in any of my own compost. And then I literally just <laughs> stick the cuttings right in the ground. These cuttings are actually a little bit long. I don't need them to be quite this long. And what I like to do is kind of form them into little mounds of plants. And I'll get you guys a close up on this. But basically I wanna fill up this whole area and make it look like I just purchased maybe say three sedum plants, but instead of doing that, we got them completely for free. These cuttings are definitely too long. So I'm gonna shorten all of them up. A sedum will take from just about anything. You could probably just even stick a leaf of sedum into the ground and it would root just like comfrey. Somebody gave me once literally just a leaf of comfrey and now it's turned into a whole comfrey plant. But don't worry about getting like a real big cutting. You really only need kind of a pretty short cutting to get things going and get it on the right track here. Now, isn't this so much fun? This is the kind of gardening that, that really makes me happy. I mean, it'll be so much fun to plant those new annuals, but this just, I don't know, this just does it for me, you know? <laughs> so I just stick these, keep sticking them. So just strip those lower leaves. No need for all that stem stick it right in the ground and we're good to go just like that another way you could do it which might be a little bit faster is to just grab a bunch of cuttings and cut them to the length that you want and then plant them almost like you're planting a bouquet That's probably a little bit faster and easier come to think about it. So I was able to get four brand new free plants from those sedum. So we'll just water these in really good. It's definitely important if you're doing cuttings like this and putting them directly in the ground to give them a real nice soak afterwards. Even though it's gonna rain today, I definitely wanna water them in just to settle them in place and get that root growth started as soon as possible. So I'd love to hear about what has been successful for you in terms of sticking cuttings directly into the ground. Are there certain plants that you've tried and it's been really successful? And then maybe some that you've tried and it's just better to go ahead and take the cuttings and bring them inside into a more controlled environment to grow. Um, one that I've also tried directly outside that worked well was the verbena bonariensis, a perennial verbena. But I like to do that pretty, pretty early on in the season when it's real cool. So we'll just get these leftover sedum leaves into my compost and then we can plant some angelonia. That's gonna be so, so beautiful. I didn't have any angelonia in the garden last year and I really miss that. 
So this is the Angel Face Steel Blue Angelonia. The tag says here it grows 18 to 30 inches tall. The year I grew it last, which was I think two years ago, I think you can see it in the background of a video where I did the um, pumpkin flower arrangement with dried flowers on top of the pumpkins and they definitely grew at least 30 inches tall for me. I think I got those on sale too that year, so it's kind of lucky. I love Angelonia. So we'll just get these kind of interspersed around the alliums. So I think this year I'm just gonna leave all my allium heads up. I always leave the ones in the driveway garden because they're just so beautiful and they add so much texture to the garden. And I'm just basically planting around the bulbs right now. I'm trying to be careful here to work around my alley and bulbs so I don't hit any of them because I definitely want them to come back again next year. What are you doing, Grace? So I went ahead and removed the majority of the violas. I left a few that are in a little more shade. It has the shade under some lilies there, but I think what we'll go ahead and do is, you need some water, Grace? Is we'll go three, two, one, ta-da! I think it looks great. Gracie, what do you think, honey? Let's see what she thinks. Oh, no, she's on to the next planting job. So I'm just starting to see my zinnias pop up here. Not all of them, but a few are popping up. So this sweet pea that's really struggling, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the compost pile. And this is the Coconut Appeal Thumbergia. It says 60 to 96 inches tall. So that should climb all the way up here and then maybe part way over. I'm thinking maybe I should pull the other sweet pea from there and do another one of these coconut appeals just for continuity's sake, but those sweet peas are looking great. So it's kind of a hard decision to make this time of year, especially with the weather just being all over the place. So hot and then so cold, just a strange year for the weather. And I couldn't believe these were included in the sale too. All the climbers were on sale. Do you guys feel like these lighter colors are new? When I was younger, I feel like Thumbergia only came in orange, maybe yellow, but over there at the nursery, they had this kind of this ivory color. She had a pink, I think she even had like a pinky purple. So has that been around a while and I'm just kind of behind on the news? And what I have here in the center of my pot is an inkberry holly, which if you struggle with um, boxwood blight in your area, which we do here in South Central Pennsylvania, the inkberry holly is a really, really nice replacement for a boxwood. And you can share it just like a boxwood if you like. So now that I know you can fill a box for $25, the question is gonna be, will I be able to resist going back and getting another box for $25? Maybe I'm gonna have to set up the flower stand after all tonight, just so I have a little extra cash. So I've got everything planted, watered in, and so now we can go ahead and pick a few cups of tart cherries and make those muffins. So this is the double chocolate cherry recipe from All Recipes, and I'll make sure to link that in the description. 
but we start out by just mixing up all the dry ingredients. So two and a half cups of flour. Oops, sorry, two and a third cups of flour. One and a fourth cups of sugar. And can you tell that my measuring cup is well loved by Grace? So there's one, fourth, a third of unsweetened cocoa powder. two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. You can tell I'm not a very clean baker. And then we just mix all this together and we make a well in the center. Okay, set that aside. So now we'll mix the wet ingredients. I don't have a full cup of sour cream, so I had to add in a little bit of mayonnaise to make up the difference. Next we'll add in a half a cup of milk. A third a cup of vegetable oil. One teaspoon of almond extract, which is my favorite combo when it comes to tart cherries. Anything tart cherry and almond I love. I'm a little bit worried about the mayonnaise, but my favorite chocolate cake recipe uses mayonnaise. It's like almost a whole cup of mayonnaise in that cake. So hopefully the substitution will work out. We'll see. I wasn't planning on that. Pour our wet mixture into our dry there. It says stir until just combined. Okay, and then it says to fold in our tart cherries. So these are our cherries that I pitted and I also cut in half from our cherry trees. This recipe does call for sweet cherries. So that's another adjustment I'm making and we'll see how it works out. And one cup of chocolate. So I'll just put half this bag in. and then fold that in and we'll put it in the muffin tins. It also calls for jumbo muffin tins, which I don't have. And it says it makes 12 jumbo. So I'm guessing it makes 24 regular size muffins, but I am definitely so far from being an expert in baking. I just enjoy it. So let's see how this goes. All right, 20 to 25 minutes, and we'll see how it goes. So we're just waiting for our muffins to cool now, but this whole day I've been checking my phone because I've been expecting a really special delivery that I've been looking forward to for months now. And it just arrived, so let's open it together. Oh, beautiful. So this is Millie Prowse first book and I'm so excited to dive in. I think I first heard of her from Sarah Raven because I think she's doing Sarah Raven's floral designs this year at Perch Hill. But right, let's take a look inside. If you follow her on Instagram, you probably will recognize some of these pictures because she does window seal Wednesday, where she does a design every Wednesday in her window seal. 
Her designs are so beautiful, full of so much life. And I know her grandma was really important to her as well and influenced her decision to kind of work in the garden. So I'm sure this is going to end up being a must read. I'll put a link to this in the description below, but I think the rest of the day is gonna be me, coffee, and Millie Proust, and muffins. Well, they definitely smell good. They look good. So let's see if they taste good. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> that's actually better than I expected. All right, this definitely feels like eating a cupcake rather than a muffin. By the way, what is the difference between a cupcake and a muffin? Is it the icing? I don't really know, but this is delicious. This is better than I expected and it's totally fine with the mayonnaise. You don't get a mayonnaise taste at all. You just get that nice texture of having something creamy in there. So I'll put this recipe in the description box below, as well as some other recipes that I really like using tart cherries. Well, friends, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's just so wonderful to get to spend some time together out here in the garden. I hope your gardens are all doing great and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye!